Are you a sinner or a saint? If you're like me, you may be a little of both. Hi, I'm Ryan Barnett, lead pastor at First Methodist Waco, and I want to talk to you about what it is to live a life as an imperfect saint. This weekend marks a holy day in the life of the church. It's called All Saints Sunday. Historically, on All Saints Sunday, churches around the world lift up the names of those persons who belong to their church at the time of their death. We believe that we transfer their membership from the church on earth to the church in heaven, that they rise into immortality if they have placed their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And yet, while we refer to them as saints, we know that in life they may have been imperfect saints. My predecessor in this church is named Steve Ramsdale. He's an incredible leader. And just recently I asked him if he would be willing to come back on our staff as Pastor Emeritus and plant for us a new church start on the south side of our city. He agreed having prayed to God and received direction. And so I pulled up to that south campus and saw a huge banner that said three statements. One, nobody's perfect. Two, everybody's welcome. And three, anything's possible. I can't think of a saying that would be more appropriate when we think about who we are as people on earth and who it is we become when we pass into eternity. Nobody's perfect. Scripture tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I don't need to unpack or expound that for you. If you've met anyone, if you've even met yourself, you know nobody's perfect. Though we like to think of ourselves perhaps more highly than we ought, we know in reality that none of us lives a perfect life. All of us are capable of doing incredibly unhealthy and unhelpful things, both to others and to ourselves. I have a five-year-old son, and as a parent, you'll understand, you don't have to teach your child how to sin. They just are born knowing it. No one has to teach you how to lie, how to covet, how to envy, how to want to grab something away from someone else that isn't your own. It just comes out. It just comes out. And the reason for that is nobody's perfect. Not me, not you, not anyone that any of us is going to encounter in our daily life is perfect. We're all in the end sinners. We are all in the end imperfect people trying to make our way from one end of our life to the other. That's what makes this next statement so incredible. Everyone's welcome. God's Word tells us that there is not anyone anywhere, no matter what they've done or what their background has been, that isn't welcome to come into His family. You know, people often say things like, I don't join the church because it's full of hypocrites. Well, the fact that it is makes it possible for anyone to come and join in, doesn't it? Because if the church was only a place for perfect people, it would be empty all the time. Not just during a global pandemic, but it would be empty all the time. The church is not a mausoleum for perfect people. It is a hospital for broken people, people who are in search of something more than the broken world has to offer. If the church was not open to everyone who have done anything, then I couldn't be a part of it, much less the pastor of it. The miracle of God is that He says, this is a place for anyone. And everyone who calls on His name finds a place here. Imperfect, broken sinners find a place for life transformation right here in the midst of his family. It says in scripture these words, no one who trusts God like this, heart and soul, will ever regret it. It's exactly the same, no matter what a person's religious background may be. The same God for all of us, acting in the same incredibly generous way to everyone who calls out for help. Everyone who calls help God gets help. 
And that's why everyone is welcome. Translated differently, it says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord is saved. And that means me. And that means you. Wherever you are, whatever you've done, no matter how imperfectly you have lived your life, God says that there is room and space for you to be welcome here, that you might be transformed from an imperfect sinner to a saint worthy of eternal life. That brings us to the conclusion of that nifty little saying of my friend Steve's. Anything is possible. As impossible as it may seem that God can take the most broken, hurting, sinful person and do something magnificent with their life, Scripture tells us nothing is impossible for God. We are told in 1 Corinthians that in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. For the perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable body puts on imperishable body, and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. You see, that's why we celebrate and All Saints Sunday. That's why we can in faith declare that these imperfect people have been made saints by the glory and grace of God. Our brokenness, our imperfection exists not in the part of us that God has made, but in the part we ourselves have created. It, it's the part that exists in this in, this perishable, this mortal body and mortal frame. That, that sinful part, that broken part, that part that we long to have healed doesn't exist in the part that belongs to the Lord. It's the part that belongs to this broken world. And so when we come into the faith of God, when we cry out, help God, He begins His deep work in us. And it, because He is the one who does this magnificent work in us, that it doesn't matter where we've been or what we've done, what choices we've made. Listen to me. There is nowhere you can go. There is nothing you could have ever done that is beyond the help and the redeeming of this God who says, you are welcome and anyone who calls on His name will be saved. It's not by our works, so we can't boast. It, it's not by anything that we have done, so we cannot brag. That's why the church does not look down on anyone else, because our confession is we are the worst of people, the most broken of sinners. And we've done nothing to deserve this great grace that has been given to us. It has been done by the grace and the mercy of a God who loves us more than we can even understand. All we've ever done is cry out, I am helpless, Lord. Help me. And not because of who we are, but because of who He is. He who says, in my very nature, I am love. He stretches out His hands across eternity and He wraps us up in His embrace and He transforms us from the inside out until all that brokenness, all that pain, all that hurt is transformed into glory. It's why we can name with confidence those who were imperfect saints among us and say in faith, that God has transformed them, putting off the perishable brokenness, putting off the mortal sin, and making them whole into the people He created them to be, into His beloved children, welcomed in the halls of heaven itself. That 
is possible not just for them, but for you. Friends, I want to affirm for you that I believe nobody's perfect, but that everyone is welcome. And for all those who cry out to the Lord, anything is possible. In the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil, I now surrender. You are breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. 
So make me a vessel, make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. God, I came here with nothing but all you have given me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil I now surrender, you are breaking new ground. Oh, you are breaking new ground. So make me your vessel and make me an offering. Bring 